Good morning. Welcome to Victoria's Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We are studying now. We are in the 11th week in the subject called the Law of Spiritual Authority. We are studying the spiritual authority and dominion that God has given to man. We have been talking about the question, or actually it's been a common saying by millions of Christians that is not true. And it is the statement, God is in control. Well, is God really in control? God is in control of some things, but not everything. And that's where a lot of uh, Christians make a mistake. They just assume God is in control of everything. No, God is not in control of everything because he has given control of some things to other people, to people. And so the question is actually, who is in authority? Who is in authority? That answers the question, is God in control? Who is in authority? And with the statement, God is in control, many times you will hear the statement, God is sovereign. God is sovereign. Well, what does sovereignty mean? Sovereignty means supreme authority. And we look at the sovereignty of God. God is sovereign in these areas. Number one, God is the creator of heaven and earth, all the universe. Number two, God has established laws that are to be fully obeyed. Number three, God is the judge with a capital J of all mankind. And all men, male and female, will stand before him on judgment day to be judged for the things they have done while in the body, whether good or bad. So ultimately, everybody stands before God. And number four, God is in control of his plan of redemption. His plan of redemption. God has made his plan of redemption from before the foundation of the world. The Bible says the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. And for the course of time, God has set a beginning and end. God has set a beginning and end date for man's time on earth. God started man on earth and God is the one who will close it out and bring what we call this age and this world to an end. And we will enter into the next age and there will be a new heaven and a new earth. God has established the beginning and the end. And he has established points, dates on the timeline of man's history on earth in which God intervened and interacted with man on earth. And for example, there was a set date when God gave the word of God, the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. It was a set fixed date on God's calendar. There was a set date when Jesus was born of a virgin. Galatians 4.4 4 says, when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law. When the time had fully come. When the time had come, God set his date when Jesus would come. God set the date when Jesus would die on the cross, when he would be raised from the dead, when he would be exalted and in ascending into heaven. God set the date when the Holy Spirit would be poured out on the day of Pentecost. And God has set his date for the return of the Lord, the second coming, for the battle of Armageddon, when Jesus will set his feet on the Mount of Olives, when Jesus will set up his throne on earth to rule for a thousand years, and then for the final white throne judgment at the end. God has set his date. So God is in control of the plan of redemption in which he intervenes and interacts with man to bring salvation to man. However, he then has left 
most of the rest of individual independent actions and events to the will of man. Because, let's go on now, and we've been talking about the sovereignty of man. Man has a degree of sovereignty. Meaning, man is sovereign over his own will. Over his own will. All right? So, how do we know God has given man a degree of sovereignty? Number one, man is created in the image of God. Genesis 1, 26. And God created man and said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let them have dominion. Let them have dominion, authority. Let them have authority. So you see, if we are created in the image of God, God is a ruler. God is a ruler with authority. God created man in his own image. God created man to be rulers on earth. And we talked about that, as he said, over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth and all the creeping things on the earth. And you take that and you go over to Psalm 8. Psalm 8. And then again, you read, what is man? That you are mindful of him, the son of man, that you care for him. You made him a little lower than Elohim. The Hebrew says Elohim. If your Bible says angel, it's wrong. Elohim is a proper name of God. It's the name of the creator God. Elohim, you made him a little lower than Elohim. And you, in verse 6 through 8, says you made him ruler over the works of your hands. So God made man in his own image to be a ruler. To be a ruler over the earth and over his own will, self-will. And it is called free choice, free choice. So God has given man a free choice. And we gave you Deuteronomy 30 verses 19 and 20. I set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Curses, blessings and curses. Now choose life. And Joshua 24, 14 and 15, especially 15 says, choose you this day whom you will serve. God has given man a free choice. And we talked about in the last several days, your free choice includes the choice if you're going to sin or not. And we talked about people who sin and then say, I couldn't help it. That's a lie. If you say you can't help it, it's a lie. You don't know the power God has given you. God, even in creation of man, man is empowered. You are empowered with free choice. You are empowered with free choice. And God said, choose blessing or cursing. You can choose what comes out of your mouth. You do not have to lose control over what comes out your mouth. You don't have to cuss. You don't have to lose control. You can choose to bless instead of curse. You can choose to love instead of hate. You can choose to forgive instead of hold offense. People, there's another thing. There's a lot of people who are saying, I just can't forgive them. You don't seem to understand forgiveness is also a choice. It is not a feeling. Don't expect feelings. Don't expect to get all lovey-dovey goosebumps for the person that hurt you. It's not a feeling. It's a choice. And if you have said, I can't forgive him. I can't forgive her for what she's done to me. 
then you're lying and you are deceived. Because the truth is, God has given you power to choose forgiveness or unforgiveness. And not only power to choose, he commanded you to forgive. And he said, if you do not forgive others, God cannot forgive you. And so he obviously knows you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And so don't tell yourself anymore. You can't. You can't forgive. You can't control this. You can control it. Anything you think you can't control, maybe it's your eating. Maybe it's drinking. Maybe it's something else. And you say, I can't control it. Yes, you can. There is power given to you. First of all, power of choice. Power of choice. Free will is very powerful. A lot of people who are not even born again who are not born again, have already used and exercised the power of the will to do amazing things, how much more powerful are you when you have the Holy Spirit in you? You have the Holy Spirit to empower you to overcome sin and to resist sin and temptation to sin. Anything God has told you not to do, you don't have to do it. Anything God has told you to do, you can do it. You've got the power. It's first in the power of choice, and then it's doubly or triply or actually hundredfold multiplied power. When the Holy Spirit comes on you and in you. And that's why yesterday I closed the broadcast. It starts with accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, and if you've never been born again, you need to do it right now. You need to ask Jesus to come into your heart. And all you need to say is, dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I know I'm a sinner and I have rebelled against you. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to come into my heart, come into my life. I invite you and I choose to serve you from this day forward and for the rest of my life. I choose to serve you. I choose to do your will. I ask you to teach me by your word and by your Holy Spirit. And I ask you to empower me today by your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I ask you to baptize me right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now that power, that that prayer has given you power. That prayer has given you great supernatural power. You are now not on your own. Now you have all the power of God behind you, with you, and in you to do all that God wants you to do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And that's where I read yesterday in Romans 6, verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Verse 13. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For you are not under law, but under grace. And verse seven, I'll back up to verse seven. Anyone who has died has been freed from sin. You're free from sin. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so I praise God. And I want you, if you have anything in your life right now that you have been struggling to overcome, just say this prayer right now. Father God, I ask you to forgive me for allowing things to control me. And I ask you to help me to overcome them and resist them. They shall not rule me any longer. And by your power and by your spirit, from this day forward, 
I live in victory over these things. And you can name specifically what things you're talking about. I live in victory over these things from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So then God has given man freedom of choice. Man is sovereign over his own will. However, man is not a God to himself. Man has a spiritual ruler. It will either be God if you yield to God and submit to God, or it will be Satan if you yield to Satan and submit to Satan. There are two spiritual kingdoms, spirit, this, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. God is king over the kingdom of light. Satan is the ruler of the kingdom of darkness. And that is in Ephesians 2.2. 2. It's also called the kingdom of the air. And he's called the ruler of the kingdom of the air. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So Satan is the ruler of the kingdom of the air. He is the spirit at work in those who are disobedient. So if God is not your Lord, then Satan is your Lord. You are not a God to yourself. You are not an independent agent. Everybody has a spiritual Lord over them, a spiritual ruler over them. It is either God or Satan. Either God or Satan. And if you are yielding to Satan in sin, Satan is your Lord and master, your ruler. You are a slave to Satan and a slave to sin. But if you have yielded to God, then say, then God is your Lord and your master. Hallelujah. And then I made this statement once last week. You cannot have God in control of everything. And also have free choice. It cannot be both. One will negate the other. If God is in control of everything, then there is no free choice. If God is in control of everything, there is no free choice. If there is free choice, then God is not in control of everything. It cannot be both. It is one or the other. God being in control of everything would eliminate free choice. God being in control of everything would eliminate free choice. And remember, God is in control. He is, let me say, back up. God is king over the kingdom of light. He is not over the kingdom of darkness. Satan is the ruler of the kingdom of darkness and the works of darkness. So all of the works of darkness are under the rulership of Satan, not God. God and Satan are enemies and the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness are on polar opposites. Polar opposites. They never cross. God never does darkness, works of darkness. Satan never does works of light. Never, 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 never. They never cross. God is only good all the time. There is no darkness in him. There is no death in him. There is no bad in him. Satan only brings death and havoc and destruction. There is no life in him. There is no light in him. There is no good in him. They are polar opposite extremities. And so God is not in control of the kingdom of darkness or the works of the kingdom of darkness. And God is not in the, in control of man's will. If God was in control of man's will, then man would be like a puppet on a string. We are not puppets on a string. God does not control us. If you have ever sinned, 
It is proof that God is not in control because God did not cause you to sin. If you have ever said anything that you shouldn't say, it proves God is not in control. It actually proves you yielded to Satan instead of yielding to God. When you have sinned, it proves you yielded to Satan and not to God because because God has told us don't sin when you do sin it's by your choice it is double mindedness to recognize man's ability to sin man's ability to disobey man's ability to rebel against God and then to say God is in control of everything. That is double-mindedness because they are opposite. If man can sin and rebel against God, God is not in control of them. If man has ability to sin, ability to rebel against God, then God is not in control over them. You have to yield yourself to God for God to be in control. And that yielding of yourself is not a once in a lifetime thing. It is a moment by moment thing. Moment by moment, you have choices in what you're thinking, what you're saying, and what you're doing. You have to choose to think and speak Words of life and light and love and not words of darkness. And so when you yield to the Holy Spirit to control your thoughts, to control your tongue and control your actions and submit to God, then God is in control in that situation, in that moment. But when you don't yield to the Holy Spirit, when you yield to the flesh and you yield to temptation to think or say or do things that are contrary to God's word are sin, then you are yielding to Satan and then Satan is in control in that situation, in that moment. So you can never say God is in control of all things at all times because of man's choices. And God is only in control when man yields to God, yields to the Holy Spirit and follows and obeys. Then God is in control in that moment. In that situation, but not in everything. But when you yield to the flesh, to sin, then you are allowing Satan to be in control in that moment and in that situation. Now, before we close, I want to remind you once again about my new book called Adventures with Jesus, a journal of my world missionary travels. This book is 474 pages with 100 photos and seven missionary journey maps or maps of places where I traveled. And this book, I really, really believe is a major blessing to Christians. I believe that it will inspire you. It will build your faith to see how God again and again and again and again comes through and is faithful to his word, to heal, to deliver, to provide, to protect, and to see the lives of people change. It will inspire you also to follow your God-given destiny and your calling, your high calling in life. And to live for God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is a very inspirational book. And so I encourage you to get a copy of it. You can go to my website for the easiest, quickest way to find it. Go to my website at victoriousfaith.co, victorious like a champion, V-I-C-T-O-R-I-O-U-S, 
faith, F-A-I-T-H, dot C-O, C-O, like Colorado. And then there's a page called Cherry's Books, and there it is listed, Adventures with Jesus, with the link to the store page where you can actually purchase the book. It is available in hardcover and paperback. Now, in that one, takes me to my next point, which we are also have also launched a brand new online Christian bookstore. Yes, it is a full-fledged bookstore. We now have 1,200 titles, 1,200 titles of Bibles, of many translations, King James Version, New King James, NIV, New American Standard, Amplified, Passion, The Message. We have many Bibles. We have many, many devotionals. We have biographies. We have study materials of books from favorite authors, such as Beth Moore, David Jeremiah, Andrew Womack, Joan Hunter, Joel Osteen, John and Lisa Bevere, John Maxwell, Jonathan Kahn, Joyce Meyer, Kenneth Hagen, Lee Strobel, Marilyn Hickey, Max Lucado, Perry Stone, Rick Renner, Robert Henderson, Smith Wigglesworth, T.D. Jakes, Tony Evans, T.L. Osborne, and the list goes on and on and on. Many, many study books that I believe you will enjoy, and my books are listed there as well. You can also find the tab for that on my website. Website. Now, join me again tomorrow, and remember, God loves you, you're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.